welcome to the channel everyone so today i'm going to be doing a quick guides video to show you all as a new player how to get into scum the first sort of day or two or what you need to do little things that you can do to help you survive find your way around you know if you're a brand new player i hope that this video is going to help you get into scum and just understand finer details about the game scum's massively popular it's it's gaining popularity as well at the moment again which is good so we're going to see a whole new influx of new players coming into scum obviously this is great for the community it's great for the dev team as well again 0.85 update is going to be close the the amount of updates that we've had on you know the patch notes uh the dev notes we've had over on tommy Slav's twitter there is a lot coming to scum this year and i for one cannot wait to see what they bring to it so first things first when you start a new game i'm, I'm going to be doing this on my multiplayer server so the first thing you're going to be presented with is this screen so we're going to want to put our name at the top now with these we can change all these down up obviously if we take some off this we can add it to this okay now generally i keep these the same three 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 and three very rarely and mess around with them again male females so they've got newer models out for the females so obviously with the difference males and females the males don't look as good but again this is something that is coming to scum maybe in the next update but again not sure you can also get Danny Trejo in a DLC and you'll automatically start with a machete in your hand, which is good, especially if you're a new player. But again, you don't really necessarily need the machete. Now I'm going to show you how to arm yourself within five minutes of landing on your parachute. Okay, so we're just going to stick with this. I mean, you can change these around as much as you want. You know, we've got tattoos. Uh, concealed mode will keep on, obviously, because I'm recording. Uh, penis size. Now, it used to be that the bigger the penis you had, the less intelligent you were. This this would affect your intelligence stat. I don't think this is a thing anymore. Um, so, again, I don't think this really matters too much. So, on to this now. So, this is where we're going to pick all our skills, our starting skills. So, those points that we used at the, at the beginning, this is where we're going to use them. So we get six skill points per area. So what we're going to do is, depending on if you're on a solo or multiplayer server, depends sort of what skills you're basically going to need. Now, if you're on a solo server, which I would recommend if you're a brand new player to Scum, jump into a solo server, like just by yourself, just play single player, um, just to get a feel of the game, get a hang of it, you know, get to know the metabolism and the way things work because jumping straight into an a, a online server with other people, unless you find a, a decent PvE with PvP server, you know, you're gonna find it a bit difficult. You may just find yourself getting gunned down every five minutes. So generally I'd, I'd advise go onto a, a solo game, you know, play a couple of hours just by yourself, get a hang of it, get to know the map. Um, so generally what I do for a solo is I'll have this on a medium and this on a medium. Now with solo, I'll put this up to a medium and my archery will go up to a medium because handgun skills and rifles, we're gonna, you know, that, that will go up by itself quite easily once we find guns and start using them. But the first things you're gonna need is mainly melee weapons because that's pretty much all you're gonna have as well as a bow and arrow, which you can make straight away. So I'd advise doing this if you're playing on a solo maybe if, you, if you're not playing on a solo maybe have them on a basic and then that gives you a bit more skill to have at least a basic handgun at least a basic rifles we still got two points so we can put it up to brawling if we really wanted to heavy weapons i'm assuming this is going to involve the lmg that's uh going to be coming to scum hopefully within the next update again what we'll do is we'll take these down we'll just put these up to medium now the dexterity so on a multiplayer server online i'd advise putting your thievery up quite high at least to a medium this will allow you to lock quick bases um you know 
gives you a bit of lockpick skill basically. Again, driving, this this will get you better speeds, better handling from the off. But again, this will go up relatively quick by itself. Uh, demolition. So demolition will help you in kill boxes and will also help you if you were to try and disarm a beeper. So with beepers, they have C4 strapped to them. What you used to be able to do, and I haven't tried this in forever, so I don't know if it's still a thing, but if you shot a beeper in the head, it wouldn't blow up. So then you could run over to it with a pair of pliers and some rubber gloves and disarm the C4 and then take the C4 from it. Now, I don't know if that's still a thing. So, I mean, be my guest. Go and try it if you wish. Uh, but again, demolition would be good for that. Also, demolition is good because you can then make, I believe, crafting part pipe bombs and stuff like that. Engineering comes into this quite a big factor as well. So, most people have this on an advanced engineering on a solo game. And the reason they do this is because when you're on a solo game, it's only you playing, and you need an advanced engineering skill to be able to build everything possible. So, obviously in a multiplayer game, you could have this on a medium, and someone else in your group could have an advanced engineering, so then you're always set. So, generally though, I'll have this on a medium. You know, I, I don't generally need an advanced skill set um, for engineering on a solo. But some people say go with advanced and solo if you're a new player. I generally keep it to a medium. Um, and then I will give myself a bit of medical skill on top. As well as a bit of survival skill. And a bit of awareness. So obviously down here we've got a lot more stuff. Tactics, animal handling, cooking, education, and psychology, programming and electronics, biochem. And we have farming, which is a new one in the in a previous update. So we haven't really hit farming quite a lot since it's come out. But we may go through that just to show you. Now, we still got our dexterity skills. Again, stealth, it's good to have. Throw in, I don't really throw a lot of stuff. Again, motorcycling, we can get that up quite quick. Aviation, again, get out quite quick by using a vehicle. Um, driving, again, yeah, thievery. I mean, again, we can build that up quite quickly with a uh, lockpick board. So stick yourself up to advance. That's basically my setup of what I go with on a solo. So now that's done, we just hit create. Let's give you a nice little sort of run down rundown of why you're here. So property of Tech 1 Department of Corrections, Scum Correctional Facility. So see your name, alias. My crime was arson. I believe this is the same every time. I don't think it changes. But it'd be uh, it'd be nice to see that sort of change, get different sort of crimes each time you come in or different people. Obviously today's date, which isn't today's date. It is today's day, it's American. <laughs> it's today's day, it's just backwards for some reason. Ugh. I'm gonna get hate from Americans for that, but you know. Birthday, eye colour, hair colour, flaws, smoking, age 20 years old, height 85, weight 85, sorry, height 108 centimetres, and then it gives us a rundown of our skill set here. So we should say okay, and then we'll get thrown into the world. So, we're on Scum Island now. What we need to do is not panic. Our hands will untie themselves in a second. Best thing to do is just have a quick look around, see what you can see. We're not in the greatest area, but we've got a couple of things around, so... Let's head down this way first, and we'll go to this little town down here. when you land to make sure there's no puppets around you look all right okay so in a, in a solo game obviously your jumpsuit it's not going to really matter too much of getting rid of it straight away because you're in a solo game there's no other players around you now if you're in a multiplayer game 
people advise getting rid of these straight away because you stand out like a sore thumb in them. Obviously, in a bush like this, it's going to be harder to see me than if I was stood, you know, in the bush with these on. So, again, with a solo game, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so, what we're going to want to do straight away is find some rock piles like this and just hit F and it'll search. Now, if you circle around this rock pile, you'll get more rocks out of the one pile. So, you can usually do it three or four times on a rock pile. And there you have, we've got five rocks instead of the two that we didn't have. Now, with your bank card, you don't really need it, so just get rid of that. And then if we go up to our crafting menu, now we've got all these rocks, we can make a stone knife. So if we make a stone knife, and what you want to make sure you do is pick your knife up. So when you make things and craft things in scum, they don't automatically go to your infantry. They'll go on the floor or around the area in front of you. So to do this, you can either click and drag it, or you can double click it. Another one is you can highlight it over this grayed out area and it will go in automatically. Obviously, if there's not enough room for it, it won't go in like this one. Okay, so make sure you pick that up. And then what you want to do is find a bush like this and just cut it down. And this will produce us some sticks. So we've said sticks. Okay, we don't have enough sticks, so let's cut down another bush quickly. Let's move these rocks over here quickly. So with these sticks and rocks, what we're going to want to do first of all is make a stone for a small stone axe head. So as you can see, it still can't do it. Even though we've got the uh, small stone axe head and we've got long wooden stick, we haven't got a rope. Now if you click on these little arrows here, it'll go through different types of materials that you can use. So as you can see, we've got rope. Improvised rope, tree bark rope, or wire, and thread. So we can use any five of those items to make this. We have none of them on us at the moment. But a good little thing that we can do is small wooden sticks. We find five of them, which we have here. We go into our crafting menu. Just scroll down to items, no skill. You'll see tree bark rope. So you can actually make this out of five small sticks. It comes in real handy when you're stuck and you have no rope but you need to craft something or make a bag quickly or make yourself a weapon you can quickly make one by doing that so now we have these two items and we have our long wooden stick we go back to crafting and go back up to no skill tools and weapons we'll see stone axe here we now craft that okay so as i said before again it's going to be on the floor but with these you can put them on your back we've got two slots for our back we put that on there Keep that wooden stick with us for now. See, just like that, we now have a nice axe. So, one thing you can do is, obviously we're going to need to make ourselves a nice bag, backpack. What we can do is, we go into crafting. As you can see, we've got improvised career backpack and a small improvised backpack. So, what we're going to do is, now we've got our Hats. We come and chop down this tree quickly. So the one thing we're looking for in the tree, we're not actually looking for the logs, we're looking for this tree branch. So with the tree branch, pick that up, go back over to where all our rocks were. Now, if you highlight over this, hold F, it will bring up an action bar. Now, if you see here, it says chop tree branch. Just click that, and this will give you a lot of long and short sticks. So you should be able to make quite a bit of rope, as well as make your bag and everything else you need to make with this one tree branch. So, as you see, that disappeared now. If we look behind us, we've got all these long sticks, and we've got a lot of small sticks as well. So, what we can now do with these, as I said, if we go into crafting, so for this, we're going to need uh, five rags, rope, 
on wooden sticks, stone knife. We've got one of these. Rags, rope, and that's it. So one takes more than the other. What we can do, as it's quite hot down here, is just cut our clothes up. So this is a good way of getting rags straight away if you need them. And we'll cut our orange top into our rags. So now I've got five rags. I think we needed six, didn't we? I don't need a five, a bit of rope. Uh, we need a sewing kit though, which we can't do. So, forget what I'm saying. We're going to do this. So, we need three rags, a bit of rope. Go to crafting, because we've got small sticks here. We can make another bit of rope. Make that quickly. There's a reason I've kept this long stick on us as well. It's because we're going to use that to make ourselves a nice spear. So, with this... Stay in crafting. We now have this bag available. So craft that quickly. And there you have your improvised career backpack. So double click that and it'll put it on. And as you can see, we've now got a lot more infantry space than we did have straight away. And we're in the middle of nowhere. It's not like you're going to land here and find a hiking bag or a backpack straight away. So this is a good way of getting yourself some infantry space for cheap. And very quickly. Next up, let's go into crafting, come back up to here, and we can see that we've got an improvised wooden spear. Now we can make a metal spear as well as a stone spear. So the best thing to do, search for some rocks, found some rocks. Uh, do we have no rope left, do we? So let's cut this into small sticks. So we'll get two small sticks from one long stick. As you can see, we've already got three here. That'll give us the five we need to make another piece of tree bark rope. Now, if you find yourself stuck, you're, you're in a, a built-up area and there's not a lot of trees or bushes around, you can't find sticks to make any rope, you can actually make them out of rags as well. So with your rag strips, five of these will make basically the same thing as five sticks would make. Yeah, so if you if you haven't got any sticks or well, there's no brushes around, but you've got loads of these on you, cut three of these up, and that'll be enough then to make you one bit of rope out of rags. And yeah, you can use it exactly the same way. So back into crafting. Now we've got a piece of rope. We need stones. I need two stones. I've only got the one. So there you go. There's two stones now, and then we can make a improvised stone spear. And voila. As I said, remember to always pick up your items. Um, they won't go into your on your back or in your inventory straight away. You have to pick them up. Okay. So next up, we have a bow. So create a bow, you need one long stick and some rope. So again, we can cut these if we wanted to, but I'd advise just keeping these because we can use them for... Um, patching ourselves up so let's cut this long sticks into small sticks doesn't take too long to do it uh, and that way you're not wasting your medical resources again cut into small sticks and there should be enough then to make one bit of rope which will then be enough to make our bow one two three four five six there so that's fine back into crafting make another piece of rope quickly and while you're doing all this this is getting your survival skill up I believe so two thousand nine hundred and twenty XP so you're gaining stuff you're gaining XP while you're doing all this so craft this one I'm sure it's survival that goes up from this, but we'll check out. Yeah, survival. So, it's not bad. I mean, we've got near 3,000 XP from five minutes of standing here, cutting down some bushes, crafting up some things. Not bad gains. Now, again, boat, take our stone axe, put it in there. We can hotkey this. Hotkey it to three, and then that way we can just hit three and it will come out of our backpack. We 
and go straight back in. Put your bow on your back, and there you have it, you're armed with a spear and a bow. Now to make some arrows, just again, cut these into small sticks. With them you can make wooden arrows. Now you can make wooden arrow feathers, uh, stone tip arrows, metal tip arrows, but for those you're going to need different items, like feathers. This, you just need a stick. So at the moment we can make four arrows. So we're just going to um, chop the rest of these three down. This will give us another six arrows here. And then from that, we'll be at least semi-armed to the point of where we can defend ourselves against a couple of puppets. And this way, it'll allow you to be able to go into the cities and the towns and just search about a bit more freely. This has given us hand abrasions. So, as you can see, our health's slightly affected. <laughs> hand abrasions have now gone into stabilization. So, without gloves on, while I'm chopping stuff, you know, while I'm making things, it's going to wear my hands down slightly. You know, they're going to get marks on them. They're going to get cuts and scrapes. And that's going to cause me medical issues. So, with the hand abrasions, they're not too bad. As you can see, then it built up and it's already gone to stabilization. I haven't had to do anything to it. To prevent this, you, you merely need to find some gloves, some decent gloves, put them on, and it will stop this. Okay? So, now we've got all of our sticks. Let's go into crafting and just craft. I can see it's very quick to make them. So, you just have to sit here and click craft and make all of these up. Just like that, we have arrows for our bow. Now, with this, I have to move these around a bit. Ah, so we're already in a problem now where we don't have enough infantry bow. We could add it here, make an improvised quiver. Now this will give us a bit more space. We've only got one rag, so. Let's just cut these up. Because this will give us one set of rags. So we've got one, two, and then three. We are going to need to make another bit of rope, though, for this. So let's just cut this down quickly. As you can see, if we go back into our health, and abrasion is going back up again. In and then two bark rope. So you can use one, two, three, four, five, you know, to go along all these. It's hotkeys. I mean, generally look for your hotkeys on your uh, on the PC because you, you'll find that there are some good ones in there that are coming quite handy. Uh, what were we doing with this rope? My mind has drawn a blank. Quiver, what we wanted. We want one of these, so we need five long sticks. Pick that up. Okay, there we go. Let's make one of these quickly. And then what we can do is put all our arrows into the quiver. And then it's not taking up extra space elsewhere. But again, this is going to take you, what, 10, maybe 15 minutes of gameplay from when you first drop in to get yourself set up like this, but. You know, it can be worth it, especially when you're a new player. You don't really fully understand what's going on. You know, we've now got this much space, which is enough for just our arrows to go in. Depending on what sort of quiver you have, it gives you more space. I think a military quiver would give you three or, uh, three slots, so you get nine spaces. So it's a lot more space, but... So you can just double-click on these. And it'll put them into your inventory. Then we have 12 arrows. So, just like that, we're now set, ready to go. Okay. So, as you can see, our stone knife's now gone because its durability ran out. But that's perfectly fine because there's a small town just down the road. And as we've got ourselves set up now, we can have a little walk down there. So you, if you hold down shift and hit W, you'll automatically run. You 
don't need to hold W and mess around. You can just use your mouse. It's another little hotkey for you. Search logs. You'll find lavas and stuff in them. A little bit of protein for you if you need it. Again, there's plenty of bushes and stuff in the map that you can search. And they'll have um, like berries, stuff like that. You can find olive trees, apple trees. You can find farm plots which have potatoes, onions and cucumbers. So when you're actually approaching a town like this, generally it will be quite quiet. Um, depending on what server you're on, obviously I'm on my private server at the moment. This is what I generally use to record on. Now, I've got the puppet count quite high. I say. But it seems very quiet around here at the moment. Gunpowder. And there's some thread. So now we have some thread. What we can do is we can craft ourselves an improvised sewing kit. Now with an improvised sewing kit, we use this uh, to repair our clothes. Or as I said to you earlier, we can use that to repair puppet's clothing to 50%. And then we can wear that clothing to get rid of our orange jumpsuit. So with this again, make sure you pick it up. There's nothing goes into your inventory when you make it. I can't stress that enough because the amount of times I've left stuff just laying on the floor when I first started playing this game. Nice. Oh, I heard something running then. Ah, there's no water in there. Not bad, found a couple of apples there. Oh, well I was saying earlier you won't find a bag straight away, but sometimes you will. So we're going to equip this. It's a lot bigger than the other bag. And then put this in here. And then we're going to cut this into rags and take our rags back from it. Go for those headshots. Just don't get hit on the rebound. Sure dead. I'm bleeding slightly. It's not going to be too bad. It will just be a C1 injury. So I'll show you quickly. So we're bleeding C1. Now these will heal themselves. But as you can see, we're getting external pathogens. And we're getting wound germs. Our immune system is fighting it though, so the contamination is now gone. Now, we are losing blood if we just leave this injury open. But we're not going to be losing loads. Now, if we hold control, we can now see all the stats about it, and we can also see how to treat it, etc, etc. So, every muscle group can bleed separately and be in any of the four stages simultaneously. The first stage of bleeding is C1. It does not require treating because it's automatically stabilizes. You can treat it to stop the bleeding preemptively. C1 progress bar shows time until stabilization. So a C2, C3, and C4 prog progresses worse than what a C1 does. So if you leave your C1 open and you get hit again, it may turn into a C2. Now, with the C2, they don't kill themselves. You will need to apply some sort of bandages to it. All you need to do is click on it here, and then you'll have things come up like this. So we can actually treat this with the alcohol. So if any pathogens were still in there, it would then help. So now we've got 1.1% disinfectant. So that, that will help with stuff like infections. You know, all this sort of stuff. 
and you can get antibiotics, you can get painkillers and vitamins and all sorts of other stuff to help you with your medical side. Now, it may look complicated, it may sound complicated looking at all this different stuff, but it's it's really not. It's you know, just just think of your general day to day life and what you need to live, like fluid, water, food. You know, if you, if you cut yourself and it gets infected, you need some antibiotics or you need to treat it with some, you know, with some alcohol like this, for instance. And that way, it will help you. Now, with your, all your vitamins and stuff, sometimes even I struggle to keep these all green, right? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that some when you're first starting out in this game, you will not find everything at your feet to keep all this maximum. Same as all of this. This all comes with, you know, playing the game a little bit and learning what foods are good for you, what foods aren't as good for you. You know, your fat mass can go up against your body mass. All of these then affect your stats. So as you can see right now, my constitution, I'm not moving. So this is why it's red. Because I'm just sat still, I'm basically going to just be gaining fat. Yeah? So... If, again, hold control, it runs for everything on this. So it's it's not like there's no, no stats or nothing to tell you how to deal with it. Okay. Again, same thing. This isn't being affected. This is being affected by fat loss or dexterity. And again, if we're moving around, that goes up more because we're losing more fat. Again, our intelligence will go up when we're learning stuff. Um, when you're performing tasks successfully. And again, all your stats are down here that you can see, and they will, event they will go up very slowly, but as you can see, we started on a medium. We haven't used our bows yet. That's why we're on zero experience. But as you can see, we're already on 1,244 XP from, what, 15, 20 minutes of gameplay, killing a few puppets. So, Obviously, we've got all these stats as well. Blood type, AB positive. Again, tells you your blood volume, how many teeth you've still got. I haven't actually lost a tooth in this game yet. Um, but again, I think that's going to be affected by yeah physical trauma. Although they can grow back with time, which I didn't know. I'm guessing you can lose your teeth just by getting into a fight with someone. Uh, stamina, your gear weight. So I'm at 17 out of 36k. If this is over 36k, then we're going to have more weight on us, which is then going to affect our skills again. It's going to affect our stamina. This And again, it may look complicated, but after a couple of hours of playing and just, just generally flicking this open while you're running and just looking at it, you can see things moving around and you'll learn different stuff about it and what affects what, what helps other stuff. Again, with food, if you hold control over your vitamins, it tells you exactly what you need. So for vitamin A, you need carrot, dandelion, parsley, pumpkin, rose hip, cooked vegetables, vitamin pills, melon, ramson, or butter. And that will get your vitamin A out. And again, exactly the same with every single one. It will tell you what you need or what's best to eat to get that vitamin up. So obviously our vitamin B12 at the moment is dropping. So we need some cornflakes or some rabbit, deer meat, vitamin pills. So again, you can find vitamin pills in medical areas laying around. If you take them, it will just boost these a little bit. Minerals, same thing again, what sort of food you can eat to boost them up. Now, at the moment, we are on an empty stomach. Even though we've eaten this, it's still classed as empty stomach. So, intestines, this will show how much of our stomach's emptied into our intestines, then into our colon. And when this is full, we then need to defecate. Same with the bladder. When this gets to a certain level, you'll need to have a wee. And you can do that in the game by just holding tab down. If you hold tab down, you can see here, toilet, you can have pee, a poop, and a vomit. So if you've eaten something that's going to affect your health severely, you can force yourself to vomit. And this should bring it back up. Got a friend outside. Okay, so generally this is this is quite self-explanatory. You know, we all need the toilet. We all know how 
to eat, how food works and how it gets digested and the end result. So, I mean, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Again, this, you can quite quickly learn what, what's the best sources by holding control, just going through these. Again, we can see how much mu muscle mass we have, how much body fat we have, what affects it. And again, with protein, best things to have for these. Hold control and we can see everything on it. This will give us our energy stat. This one will give us our water stat. This is our reserves. Yeah. So you can fill your energy back up by uh, taking in more calories than you're burning. So at the moment, because I'm running around doing loads of stuff and I'm not really eating, this is why my energy is going down because I'm not taking in more calories than what I'm burning. Again, real life self-explanatory you know if you don't eat enough of what you're using it'll affect your health and affect your energy yeah you know with water if i was to drink a bottle of water now this would go slowly back up to 100 okay so usage rate tells you here activity 49 milliliters an hour our water reserves is 350 milliliters so within seven hours we're going to be completely dehydrated if we don't take in any water. With food, again, tells you your metabolic rate, your burn rate, your intake rate. So we're actually burning six more calories right now than what we're intaking. So our energy reserve, that's why that's now going down. So with health, again, we've got our bleeding injury that was stabilizing it's treated itself into a stabilized stage and now once it's stabilized it's now going to recover okay so with all these up here obviously this tells you our blood pressure our, our beats per minute our oxygen levels and we've also got here our temperature now this is one of the more important ones to watch so i'm going to get slapped one second Okay, the door's closed. All right. I thought I left the door open for a second then. All right, back to that quickly. So, depending, as I said earlier, on what part of the map you're on, depending if you're north, if you're central, if you're south, this will affect your body temperature. So, down south, it's going to be hotter. So, your temperature will rise, especially if you're wearing thick layers of clothing like I am. Obviously, at the moment, we're not running around when we're doing anything, so it's not going to rise too much. Okay, if we went outside, we started sprinting around everywhere in the, in the heat. Then it will rise up. Oh, there's our friend. Yeah, it's, everything's now moving because we started running around. Yeah, again, it's, it's self-explanatory. It's pretty easy. It looks complicated because there's so much to it, especially as a new player when you first come into this and you look at it, you're like, whoa, why is this? What is all this? But again, it's, you know... It's very self-explanatory. If you're a new player and you want to go through some sort of tutorial, you can go into the journal and this will show you a simple crafting. Basically what I've shown you. Okay, but with this, you'll get FP points. So again, in, in a multiplayer server, it may come in handy. Generally in a solo, I don't use it. But if you're a new player, I'd advise probably just going through this. It'll probably help you. Bad crafting basically what I've shown you but this way with this tutorial it will tell you to cut all your clothes rather than cut a bush make tree bark rope etc so you don't have to use as many rags because this will make you cut your clothes up into rags to then make an improvised rope from your rags rather than making tree bark rope so generally you're using more clothing items to destroy to do this bag than you would the way I showed you. So if you're up north in the winter area, in the winter area, in the snow biome, I should say, um, it's very cold. You don't want to get rid of a lot of your clothing straight away. So using the tree bark rope trick is a good way of you know solving that problem where you can still have the warmth of your clothes without getting rid of them straight away. Again, blueprints, this will show you how to make a quick short shelter um, to save, not to save, sorry, to respawn which I'm going to show you again anyway in a, in a moment. Uh, storage facility, this will show you how to, you know, 
straight forward tree bark rope and then build a wooden chest. So what I can do in here is if I go to building, we come down to blueprints, no skill. Okay, so here is a shelter and we also have the improvised bed. Now these do exactly the same thing, but generally you'll use the improvised bed inside a base. The reason you do this is because it's white and it stands out like a swarf farm. If you were in the middle of nowhere and you place this in a bush, you know, someone will see it very easily. Over a shelter, say, which is camouflage, it's a bit harder to find, so you can go and stick this in a bush somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, deal with this puppet quickly. It's a little trick for you. If, if you're new at the game and you're kind of worried about getting swamped, get into a building and stand at a window. Not too close, because if you stand too close, they'll be able to hit you. So, I'm going to be a little bit of a distance away from the window, just so they can't hit you, but so your spear can hit them. Yeah? And then just do this until they die. Generally, I play on a PvP server that has PvP areas on it. So, generally they're quite good for new players because you'll have a friendly community within the server that will help each other out. But then they have PvP areas where they can go and have some fun and do the PvP in. If you're a new player, I'd advise going to find one of these sort of servers. Again, over you can do that over playing a solo game. And this will get you a bit more experience on a multiplayer server. There may be people on there that say, oh, let's go PvP and we can, you know, do some fighting, do some shooting. And that way you get a bit more experience up as well. And it's not going to be some hostile environment for you on your first game. It's not going to put you off the game. Um, I feel that's one thing a lot of new players do with these sort of games like Daisy, um, Scum, you know, these survival games that are generally quite, you know, quite hardcore survival games. They're not, they're not generally easy compared to, you know, some games that you find. But again, once you get the hang of it, they're not very difficult either. You know, you can learn how to play the basics of this game within an hour or two quite easily as I said on a solo or go and find a PvP server. Now you can also go onto PvP servers completely. Um Ray Kit is a good one. I've done a couple of sort of games on I say a couple of games. I've, I've done a couple of sessions on his server. Um it's quite fun. It's on the more of a difficult side of servers that I've played. But I'd recommend it um if you want a more of a PvP server with some good events um they do like a red pill blue pill so every two weeks they do a red pill so on the weekend you can then go and raid people's bases and then the next week you can't the next week you can it's a good little uh, fun thing to do so again if you're a new player go, go around just search around find find some pvp pve sort of servers mess around a little bit but again i'd, I'd advise just learning the game on a basic level before you do that it will help you out drastically when you do start playing and it's not going to give you that feeling of oh this game's too difficult or oh, i'm just getting killed all the time i just find myself walking around everywhere you know you don't need to run from one side of the island to the other in this game to be able to do things which is what i like like everything that you need to craft is generally around you like the bushes the trees you you'll find boxes with you know stuff in you'll find cars you can get scrap metal from it's there's a lot to this game that broadens it out from other survival games. Now, there is a lot, as I said, there's a lot to this game, but I'm really not going to need to worry about it because, yeah, as I said, you'll pick it up very, very quickly. I mean, I picked this game up within, I think, a couple of hours of playing it. And I mean, I still don't know everything about this game. I, I'll, I'll happily admit that, that someone could tell me something today that I probably wouldn't know about this game I'm still learning and I've got I think over 700 hours in this game now and I mean I know people that have got thousands of hours in this game so I can't really say much by saying I've got 700 hours but generally it's still quite a lot for, for my view um, for gaming so what we're going to do now is we go and get our building we're going to put down a shelter so as you can see, this is our blueprint for our shelter. We can use our 
mouse wheel to rotate it and then we find somewhere to put it like in a thick bush it's thick place that there so we are going to need quite a bit of rope for this as well as sticks but what we can do is cut this down by cutting this down we're going to get the tree branch off it and with the tree branch if we cut that down we're then going to get loads of sticks so we should be able to build that shelter up quite quick also with this tree we'll have a log which we also need for that shelter so if you chop a tree branch here all the sticks should line up behind us this way he says confidently we'll see They not go the way I thought they would. Oh, they did. Yeah, they did. Okay. So with all your sticks and stuff, you can just pick and drag them like this, and pile them up. Some people find this very long, but when you're first starting out, it's probably the only option you have because you don't have any storages, you don't have, you know, any um, you don't have a car or anything to use. So we need another two long sticks. Two long sticks. And we're going to need some short sticks to be able to make some tree bark rope. So, cut this down quickly. Make sure you pick your rope up. And walk over to your shelter. 24 pieces of rope we needed. And there you have your shelter. Now, I mean, generally, if you're just sprinting past this area, unless you're running through that bush, I mean, you're not really going to notice it. You know, it's not well hidden, but it's good enough to get away with. You know, unless someone runs through here and goes Ooh, into the thing, you know, not really going to notice it. So with this shelter down now, basically what it means, and all it means, is that you can respawn on your shelter. Now, recently they've updated it so that you can only respawn on your shelter if you have a gold bar. Now, to get a gold bar, you're going to need a bank card, a gold bank card, which costs... 5,000 and then with that you can then buy gold bars now you're only going to need one or two gold bars at a time anyway to respawn back at your shelter um, depending on what you're doing your base raiding stuff like that so as you can see at the moment I've, I've made a brand new character so we're only on 15 fame points we've got a nobody rank we've got no money no gold so if I was to die now I couldn't respawn back here now, you might think that's a bit counterproductive of why have you shown us that? Because when you do get to the point of having gold, you know, some people in this game don't have big bases. Some people like to go on the move. Generally, I don't build up a massive base. If anything, I'll have a small base where I can sleep and a few storage areas. And then on top of that, I'll have a vehicle. And then I'll loot. I'll sell all the stuff I need and I'll just keep the money until I need to buy something. Generally, there's not much point I find holding on to hordes of stuff in this game. Um, I know people that do. I know people that have owned massive houses and you walk in and there's just lockers upon lockers upon lockers and they're full to the brim of stuff where they've just looted and kept it. Now, I'm a hermit, all right? But that doesn't mean that I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I don't need a lot of stuff in life. You know, the basic needs and necessities will do. So this was just a basic sort of get started guide for beginners. Now I'm going to do this as a continuous series. So in the next episode, we're going to go towards some more military areas. We're going to go search some areas that will give you a bit better loot. And with that, we may find some more medical items. And then I'll go through a medical with you all a bit more in depth 
But for that, first of all, we're going to need medical items. And second of all, we're going to have to get into some sort of fight to give ourselves some disgusting C3 injuries. Possibly some C4s. For now, we'll end it there. But as a new player, by watching this video, you should now be able to survive the first day quite relatively easily on the island. And from there, build up your skills, build up your knowledge, and get better on this scum island. I hope you've enjoyed the video for today, and I hope it's helped some of you out. Until next week, where I'll be back with another guide. Till then, stay safe. See ya.